Uh, first of all, uh, I know January 27th is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and you are executive director of the Lappin Foundation. What is the Lappin Foundation? Lappin Foundation is a programmatic foundation, and our mission is enhancing Jewish identity across generations. We provide educational and cultural programs about Judaism in Israel, um, about 300 programs a year. Mm. Why is it that right now you think it's important to recognize International Holocaust Remembrance Day? I think it's really important because recent acts of anti-Semitism around the state, across the country, and around the world are a stark reminder that just because the Holocaust ended in 1945, anti-Semitism has not. And where there's anti-Semitism, there's other forms of hatred as well. It is interesting that just this month we have seen uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. issue an apology because of a remark that he made about Anne Frank. Uh, in Texas, we saw the five hostages being held in a synagogue there. But closer here in Massachusetts, in various school systems, such as in Danvers and Newton, there have been swastikas and other instances of anti-Semitism that have come up. What are you seeing in terms of uh, talking to local groups and addressing instances like these when they pop up in the news? Yeah, there's a dire need for Holocaust education. and. Um, it's and it's there's a danger when these these instances aren't addressed and the the connections are not made between what's happening and what's possible. Right. And yes, yeah, so and when Holocaust, um, when the rhetoric heats up and the distortion takes place, people don't understand. And then that becomes the reality. And that's where we run into trouble. So you'll go into school systems and run what's called the Holocaust Symposium. What is that I program? I do. So the Holocaust Symposium is a multi-sessional <coughs> Holocaust education program for teens or for teens and adults for an intergenerational experience. And through primary sources, survivor testimonies, through a book read, through discussion and reflection, uh, participants learn about the Holocaust. They get an excellent overview and understand that um, what was possible, and if left unchecked, it could happen again. Mm. I did think it was interesting in some of your organization's information, you say that 90% of American Jews say they believe anti-Semitism is a real problem. But I thought this number really jumped out at me. 49% of millennials cannot name one of the concentration camps or ghettos used during the Holocaust. What does that say to you about the level of education about this catastrophic event that took place only 75 years ago. Right, um, not too long ago. And it, it says a few things. It says that it's not a priority. Holocaust education is not a priority in our educational system. And I think it also says maybe people don't care. And, and mm. that's a danger, too. Um, and also, the farther we move away from the time that the Holocaust happened, that if we don't remember never to forget, then we will forget. Mm. And um, it, is, it is a warning sign. You know what I always thought was an interesting factor here? You know, we kind of nostalgically talk about the greatest generation and all that they did to win World War II. And then infamously, a lot of them went on with their lives and really didn't want to talk about it. Do you think that was perhaps part of the problem? that so many Americans came home and, and didn't talk enough about what they saw that had gone on in Nazi Germany? I think perhaps there were no words to describe what happened. Um, I know it, it took a long time for my family and my community to talk about it, to find the words to talk about it, to describe it. It was a trauma. It was a trauma to humanity. It, it was catastrophic to the Jewish people. And I think set that against the backdrop of coming home and winning a war. So it was the elation of the victory against the devastation of what happened and to find the words to describe. I know from the some of the liberators I have spoken with, 
there were no words. And mm. I think it's taken time to find them and mm. to communicate them. And, and just the shock. I, I will never forget that story of Elie Wiesel talking about being a child in Auschwitz and a big, strong, burly American soldier on his knees sobbing at what he saw there. Yes. Can I ask um, a question just quickly about very often what we'll see is that uh, swastikas are found in a school on a bathroom wall or a door. What is it that you say to adolescents about why a swastika, that symbol, <laughs> is so disturbing? So um, what we do, and this is what the Holocaust Symposium addresses, is we take a deeper dive, not a 45-minute explanation about the swastik and why it's bad is to really understand what it represents. And if students are given the time to explore what it represents, what was lost during the Holocaust, right? Um, the, the devastation that will go on for generations, because I can't believe when students know what it really means and we're able to connect the dots for them, that it's not just graffiti, it's not just a symbol, it's understanding what the symbol means. And that's why education is key. And that's why we do what we do. Deborah Colton from the Lappin Foundation on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, uh, an important day to teach children never to forget. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.